Welcome back my friends. Let's just pick up where we left off and here initially in the previous video in the playlist the one just before this we looked at question number six where we looked at part a filling out the blanks in the table and we showed how we calculate those values so in this video we're going to be looking at the solution to question six part b where they're asking us to draw a cartesian plane and then plot these points on our graph and draw a smooth curve okay so let's let's just quickly get into that Okay, my friends, here they're saying using a scale of two centimeters to represent one unit on the x-axis. Okay, now if you notice, I have my Cartesian plane here well drawn up. So let's look at what they're speaking about when they're saying that we should use 2cm here to for one unit on our x-axis. Two centimeters to represent one unit on our x-axis. Now, if you notice carefully, uh, and my pointer is now at my origin, this uh, rose pink uh, zero here, that's my origin. If you notice, each bar, as I move to my left, in this case, each bar that I move, that's one centimeter, okay? So I've moved, I've just moved one centimeter, so this would be another centimeter. So from zero, from my origin, to this point would be two centimeters okay if you notice I have a, a negative one there all right so for every two centimeters I move I'm going up by one that's simply what it means or in this case I would be going down because I'm moving in a negative direction okay my friends so from here now I'm moving another two centimeters that's one that's two and then you see I have a two here okay so that's simply what they're saying two centimeters to one unit then I would move another one two two centimeters and I have a three there okay so what they're saying for for every other centimeter you're going to be increasing by one that's simply what it means two centimeters to one unit and if you notice on the right side of zero on my x-axis it's the same I have to go up one two and then you see I have a one I'm going up by one unit so it simply means I'm increasing by one each for every two centimeters then I'm going up one two increasing by one again that's two then I'm skipping one two and then I'm increasing again so that's what it means two centimeters to one unit on the x-axis now let's let's move on and one centimeters to represent one unit on the y-axis now if you notice on the y-axis it's a little bit different if I'm here at my origin and let's say I'm going up now uh, the first one that I move to the first centimeter you notice I have a one here now it's much different from the x-axis all right the scale is different so from zero to the first one I have a one there now then to the second one I have two so I'm increasing by one unit every centimeter on my y-axis okay then I would have from two I would have the next would be three then I have a four then I have a five okay so on my y-axis every centimeter I'm going up by one okay but on my x-axis every every two centimeters I'm going up by one okay so that's what the scale is saying now they're asking us now let's get back to it plot the points whose x and y values are recorded in your table and draw a smooth curve through your points and that's an easy for max let's just quickly get into that my friends now if you notice on my X in, in my X row what I'm gonna be doing I'm going to be pairing up my X and Y value corresponding values that is okay so here when X is negative 2 my Y value let me change my pointer when X is negative 2 my Y value is positive 5 so I'm going to look on my graph or my, on my Cartesian plane where these two points intersect and what do I mean by that let's just quickly go over to our Cartesian plane when finding the coordinate I'm finding the coordinate negative 2 5 negative 2 on my x 5 on my y so when finding a coordinate you start at the origin and you move the x value first so basically my x value is negative 2 so I'm going down to my left 1 2 okay so on the x I've moved neg negative 2 now I need to move positive fi 5 on the y so basically you will be looking on your y axis now as you go up from this point so I'm increasing now 1 since it's a positive value I must go up if it was a negative I would be going down all right so this is 1 from here from negative 2 here this would be 1 2 three four five and if you notice it's in line with the five here on the y-axis okay so what I'm saying we're positive five and negative two intersect on my Cartesian plane that's where that's the value I would need where negative two on the X that is and positive five on the Y let me just be a bit more specific with my language so this would be the first coordinate okay that point there I, I would be plotting 
Now I'm looking for negative 1 and 0 now. When x is negative 1, y is equal to 0. So again, I must start at the origin. So in this case, x is negative 1. So I have a negative movement. So I must move to the left on my x-axis. So I'm moving to the left here on my x-axis. But when you look on the y value, the y value is 0. So what that is simply saying, the y value has no movement on it. Okay, so since there is no movement on the y value, then I have to stop there at negative 1. So that would be the coordinate for that. Then it is saying now when x is 0, and if you notice my column, my row here, the row here is x is 0, y is negative 3. What this is saying, again, I'm positioning myself at 0 to find the coordinate. But this is now saying I have no movement movement rather on the x-axis so x is 0 so there is no movement so since there is no movement I can't move from left to right so I simply have to move now from this point negative 3 on my y and since it's a negative 3 I must go down alright so I'm going 1 2 3 down okay so this point here would be my coordinate where x is 0 and y is negative 3 alright so that's it now I am moving this pair when x is 1, y is negative 4. Again, to move my, my uh, to find that coordinate, I am starting at the origin. Now in that, this case, x is positive 1, okay? So it simply means I'm going to move 1, let me change my pointer. I'm going from the origin I'm going to move I'm going to be moving 1 on the x and then I'm going to be moving negative 4 on the y. So from this point here, sorry from this point here because it's two centimeters to one unit so on my x-axis i'm going to be moving one unit so this would be one unit then i am going to be going down four units on my y so this is one two three four so this point here negative four on my y when x is positive one so let's quickly just let's just quickly make a note of that so i uh, this is the coordinate that I'm interested in. Now I need to find when x is 2 and y is negative 3. Again, I'm starting from my origin and I'm moving the x value first. x is positive 2, so I'm going 1, 2. So I'm at positive 2 now. Then I'm going down. Since y is negative 3, I'm going down 3. So this would be 1, 2, 3. So this point here is a coordinate I'm interested in. Okay, my friends? Now I am looking for the coordinate when x is positive 3, y is equal to 0. So again, I am starting at my origin and I'm going across on the x-axis to positive 3 first. So I'm going 1, 2, 3. 3 on the x and then since the y value is 0 that is simply saying there is no movement on the y value so I can't move up or down so I'm going to stop there so this is the coordinate I'm interested in now basically what is left 4 5 when x is 4 y is positive 5 so again to find that coordinate I'm starting at my origin and I'm going on my x axis positive 4 since the 4 is positive I must move to my right so I'm going across 1 2 3 4 and then I must go in a in an upward direction since the y value is positive okay and I'm going up to positive 5 so this would be 1 2 3 4 5 so I'm interested in this coordinate here my friend right at the corner there okay so here I have plotted all my points now it is time to draw our smooth curve what I'll be doing this is a freehand drawing however if some of you have a uh, flexi curve you could always use your flexi curve to draw this quadratic function now quickly let's just connect these points and and see how our graph will look so there I'm going through that point then I'm going down through that point then I'm coming through my x-axis then oops that is a bit ugly that's a bit ugly let's just try again quickly I'm starting at this point then I'm coming down through that point okay that's good then I'm coming down then I'm going to bottom out here bottom out then I'm coming up again through that point then we are going straight up through positive 3 and then we're going right through that point here okay that's that's much better alright so that's our quadratic function 
now just a few things to share with you um, as it relates to the quadratic function if you notice if you notice if you look at the graph carefully it looks as if the graph is smiling at us okay my friends if, as if the graph is smiling smiling rather now if you look at the coefficient of x squared here the coefficient of x squared was positive one whenever the coefficient the number before the variable that's what we mean by the coefficient is a positive number you will have a smiling graph okay if it was a negative number the graph would look upside down or it would be, be looking upset okay that those are just some pointers i want you to bear in mind when drawing your graph all right now that's an easy four marks we have just collected uh let's collect another easy two marks now here they're saying using your graph estimate the value of y when x is equal to 3.5 now basically what we're going to be doing here we're going to be looking where x is 3.5 or three and a half so let me just change my color quickly now if you notice my friends they have stated show on your graph how the value was obtained and you have to show the working on your graph simply this is very easy now i need to find 3.5 on my x since they said when x is since they have said when x is equal to 3.5 okay so i need to find 3.5 or three and a half on my graph uh this would be one this is two this is three and then this is four but obviously um, halfway between 3 and 4 would be 3.5 so my 3.5 would be here so it simply means then um, at 3.5 I'm going to go up to touch my graph okay so let's go up now you're going to use your rule however I don't have a rule in this software if you notice I'm drawing my line I'm going up to where that line touch the graph now where that line touch the graph I'm just going to come from there and go straight over on my y-axis okay so when I go straight over across on my y-axis, you notice the value that I've touched? I've touched a 2 there, okay? So then, therefore, now, that's pretty easy. We can say when x is 3.5, when x is equal to 3.5, or y value, y is equal to positive 2, okay? So that's how we obtained um, our value. So that's an easy 2 marks. Now, they are, they are saying without further calculations. So since they have stated that we can't do any calculation here, we're just going to have to use the graph to determine these values. All right, my friends, they are saying us to write the equation of the axis of symmetry of the graph. Now, my friends, we would have known that the axis of symmetry is that line that cut the graph into two equal parts. OK, so basically what I'm going to be doing, looking at my graph, right, I'm going to find that point that cuts the graph into two equal parts. And, and pretty, pretty obviously, it, my axis of symmetry, I can just look at it and tell it's positive one. Um, they're asking us to write the equation. So we could say the equation of the axis of symmetry is equal to x is equal rather to one. All right. So my axis of symmetry is x is equal to one and and let me just do a rough sketch for you to show you what i'm talking about if i should if you notice use your rule you can use your rule to draw this line if you notice i'm coming through positive one okay coming right through positive one and going down and again use your rule to draw and if you should cut the graph there if you notice it's it's like half the graph would be on this side and half is on that side so if you if you have a graph leaf and you fold your graph leaf along the axis of symmetry where x is equal to positive one then then the graph would lie flush on each other each side would just lie flush on each other all right my friends so that's what we mean and just to just to just to give you some just to give you a heads up um if you're not sure how to find your axis of symmetry on a graph you could use a nice little and I'm going to give you a nice little formula here. You could say x is equal to negative b over 2a. Now, x would be equal to negative b is the same as, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. If you notice in the function, the b value here is negative 2. All right, so you could say x is equal to minus, and b is negative 2, open bracket, negative 2, close bracket, all upon 2a, and a is positive 1. So a here would be, two times one okay my friends and this would work out to, this is a positive two so this is um because a negative sign in front of a bracket would tell you that i need a positive two and this is all over two ones that is a two and we know that two upon two is really one okay so x would be equal to one and if you see see there 
you notice the line that we drew it went through the graph at x equal one okay but since they said that they don't want any calculation we wouldn't give them the calculation uh, you could do this to check yourselves okay and to ensure that you're on the right path now that's our axis of symmetry x is equal to one hope that was helpful now they're asking us to estimate the minimum value of the function y now when they ask us to if they ask us to est since they're asking us to estimate the minimum value minimum simply means how far down the graph came okay if you notice this is at this point where my pointer is is presently at that's how far down the graph came so all you're doing from here you're going to just draw a line from the bottom of the graph touching your y-axis and if you notice uh, at the bottom of the graph when I draw a line to my y-axis it's at negative 4 it touches the y-axis on negative 4 so simply what we're saying here is that my minimum value is equal to negative 4 okay that's my minimum value let me change my color all right my minimum value is negative 4 negative 4 okay my friends now my friends in part 3 they're asking us find or state the values of the solution of the equation x squared minus 2x minus 3 is equal to 0 and simply put uh, what this is saying is that when they ask you for the solution of a quadratic function uh, they're simply asking where the graph the solutions are really where the graph cut the x-axis and if you notice the graph cut the x-axis here at negative 1 and it cut the x-axis again across here at positive 3 okay so basically to get your solutions you'd say my solutions are for the last part x is equal to negative 1 or since the graph cut the x-axis at negative 1 or x is equal to positive 3 so that would be our answer for part 3 and pretty much it's that easy hope this was helpful and now my friends one important point to make before we leave is that whenever you draw a graph whenever you draw a graph or a function we should always write the name of the function on it okay my friends so remember they gave us the function here this is the name of it y is equal to x squared minus 2x minus 3 so you, you can just write it along here y is equal to x squared minus 2x minus 3 okay so you can always write the name of your function all right feel free to subscribe to this channel uh, if these videos have been helping you so you can get the latest updates okay my friends bye bye